That's what's crazy to me is that these schools with these powerful alumni networks and boosters are the ones that eliminating the sports. And like, a lot of the like the D like the D two schools that usually depend on D one football games for their budget, even though they're gonna lose by sixty three, like they're losing millions of dollars. The uh CIAA, I think they canceled a lot of their football season, a lot of teams. That's JUCO, right? No, nah, that's like it's um it's it's above JUCO. It's it's college football, but it's like somewhere around D three. Mm. It's low level, the, but it's still competitive. But the other part of it is like a lot of a lot of like executives, you know, like I said, they play those secondary sports, your lacrosse, your field hockey's, things like that. You know, and as that report said, and many of them even pay their own way because they can afford to. So it's like, and you factor in. So it's like, what are these schools really turning away? It's like, I don't, I don't really get it because you need all the reasons to get people to go to school and get on campus during this day and age. But hey, maybe the Ivy Leagues and Stanford don't. No, but Stanford's in the Pac-12. So if what's, but I mean, just in general, people are still going to try to go to Stanford just because they want Stanford on their degree. But I mean, regardless Harvard, of if they have a physical campus, Harvard. But now nah, that's an issue reason because you not. saw it when Harvard announced that they're going online, but yeah. tuition still fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, the fuck. Yeah, this, no. A lot what of am people, I doing with this degree if it's a, a pandemic and no one's working? Yep. And a lot of people said that there's going to be a lot of people who don't go to school, like especially in class of 2020. There's going to be a lot of kids that don't go to college. What if the ones who don't finish? What about a fre- what do you tell a freshman in 2020? Like this was their freshman year, the second half of their freshman year. What do you tell them? What about the ones who got to bounce back to a JUCO? What are you bouncing back up to? Bouncing back to a JUCO is not a bad idea. <laughs> That's probably shout what I out tell to him. a guy who's bounced back from a JUCO who started at a JUCO. It's not a, right it's, now, it's not I would a bad time tell, to go to a JUCO. <laughs> I would actually tell it's everyone to go to, to go to a JUCO and just take a class. I mean, you can audio anybody, production. Anybody can go to a JUCO right now. Well, not audio. But take your own advice <laughs> first. <laughs> Fam, I'm not paying to go to my alma mater. To go to take online classes, I'll just find the books for those classes and read them. I guess. But for people who are like D one athletes, like the class of twenty twenty, it sucks for them. Football players still commit to schools. Caleb Williams, the number one dual threat QB in the country, just committed to Oklahoma, so they have seven uh, top rated QBs going through Oklahoma every year. But what if there's no football? Spencer Rattler's already there. So I mean, it's when you look at it, and it you start with the Stanford thing, go to the Ivy League, and now the Big Ten, which their logo is like the it's like a B and a I don't know it's stupid. I'm really mad that the Big Ten has 12 teams and the Big 12 has 10 teams and they haven't. That's so fucking stupid. I figured that. like so confusing. And I already said it on Twitter. Like the Mountain West and the Pac-12 need to just fucking combine like Voltron and this bitch and stop playing. Like stop playing. The Mountain West it will never be a Power Five conference. Cats get drafted from those schools all the time, like Boise State, San Diego State. Uh, Kawhi Leonard came out of San Diego State. Like, there's cats who produce, but if you just combine the Pac-12 with the Mountain West conference and called it the fucking Pacific Coast Championship Conference, the PC3. First off, you can give me those naming rights and those royalties later. Uh, my full name, Kenneth Frank James Barry. Just go ahead and send me that lifetime royalty check because that's just too good of an idea. Like, all these Pac-12 schools are canceling games like with Hawaii. Hawaii, The Hawaii rule is if you schedule Hawaii, you get an extra game on your conference because it so, takes so long to get there. So that's why, like, a school in New York or on the East Coast or even Alabama or some shit will play – a Hawaii or Hawaii can play up to 14 games and be, you know, involved in the Mountain West conference. Like that's a rule that you should adopt one because, uh, all these schools literally bleed the state of Hawaii dry for their best players. Shout out to Tunga, Tunga, Tua Tunga Vailoa and Manti Teo and countless other people. Um, but the Big 12 pretty much said that they're going to cancel all their non-conference games. And they're okay if there's no season. They're, they're preparing for it. 
So that means there's not going to be Notre Dame versus Wisconsin. There's not going to be, I think it was Ohio State versus Oregon or some shit like that. Uh, it, was a, it was a bunch of huge games on the docket that now aren't going to be played. And now Notre Dame is like screwed because they're technically not in the ACC, but they're committed to the ACC. And they might have to play a whole ACC schedule this year, which would be bad because if you have to play Clemson, they're going to clap your cheeks again. <laughs> and then you're going to get exposed for being not that good of a team. That independent thing isn't really working right now. Like, it didn't really work for BYU. The only team that really works, the only team that could be independent, honestly, and get away with it, is Texas and USC. Mm. USC could play anybody in the country, 12 games, no Pac-12 alliances, and if they somehow go undefeated, they would get the nod, and they're grandfathered into the Rose Bowl. Stanford could probably do it if they weren't mediocre. Stanford can't do shit. If they weren't mediocre. They just lost a cow, bro. They can't <laughs> do shit. They lost a cow. But yeah, man, the last part of let's talk about it that we're going to talk about. Deshaun Jackson this week got dragged across social media. Um, essentially, what he did was on his Instagram, he quoted he, some quotes attributed to um, Adolf Hitler and. She's also well. Apparently, the quotes just got attributed to him. Nobody knows if he actually said it, but it's contributed to him. He took a picture of a book with the quotes highlighted, and then yeah, and then I think he put it in the caption as well, something like that. And the end of his thing made sense because he was talking about how if black people came together, you know, we would be a huge force. But the problem is he used, you know, Hitler. In it, so of course it was seen as anti-Semitic, and everyone got on his head. Um, the other element of it is um, he's also been like a big Louis Farrakhan fan, who's also said anti-Semitic things. So that's also why they're like it's pretty anti-Semitic. Yeah. And then it doesn't help the fact that well, hey, the owner, GM. And head coach of your team are all Jewish. Yeah, so that wasn't a good look. And then, of course, he got a bunch of blowback for it. Um, It really was a case of, like, you can't use the words of an oppressor to motivate people who are oppressed because it's fruit from the poison tree, so to speak. Like, and I understood what he was saying, he just really went about saying the wrong. Like, if I wanted to quote Black Liberation, I would quote, you know, a Denmark VC. I would quote a Malcolm X. I wouldn't quote George Washington. I wouldn't quote a slave owner. I wouldn't quote someone who participated in the genocide of a bunch of people. And that's where, the, like, Zach Banner came out, Cam Hayward. A bunch of people came out. But then there's also people who are saying, see, that's our point as black people. Because, yeah, this man just really needs to be educated because he misspoke. But his whole career has shown he's been a stand-up dude. But when Riley Cooper openly said, I fight every N-word in here, nobody really tried to punish him. He, in fact, not only did he get sent home, he got sent home with the two-year contract extension. And people are, are bringing that back up like, yo, y'all didn't have this smoke for Riley Cooper but you have it for Deshaun Jackson. And like Shannon Sharp said, black people, you always want us to denounce everybody, but white people don't denounce anybody. Trump has, like these owners, these NFL owners have denounced Trump at all. In fact, they've championed him. And that is the in the direct slap in the face to every black person in America and in the NFL. So there's that whole argument and people are hashing that out. And there's also a lot of people who are showing a lot of anti-black racism in the comments talked about Deshaun and it's like, you know, you can't cancel everybody. And Ed, Julian Edelman came out and said that he would, you know, invite him to the Holocaust Museum. Uh, I think he's meeting, he's already meeting with a, a rabbi in Philadelphia. Yeah. But I also think it should be brought up that Julian Edelman should also invite his white kicker uh, teammate who's a rookie who had a three percenters white supremacist tattoo on his arm and he said he got it removed. You should probably take him to the Holocaust Museum <laughs> too because a lot of those white supremacist groups were neo Nazis and they hate Jewish people. Whereas Sean Jackson misspoke. Like, if you're going to quote something powerful and equate it to Jewish people, say, you know what? 
black people need to do what Jewish people did with Nuremberg. Like, we need to follow that model. We need to re-strengthen ourselves and go after the people who harm us as a group and don't let people speak out against us as a group and hold each other accountable. Like, you can say things like that, but when you start trying to attribute, you know, quotes to inspire people but using negative figures, that's when it's a bad look. So... I mean, yeah. it wasn't even an uplifting quote. He essentially like, said Jewish people he are started off, America. He started off on the wrong foot. All bad. Like, the way, like, what he said, if what if the intent of what he said, which is what he said was at the end of it, then you don't start with that false equivalency. Like, you know what you meant, but to everyone else, it's like, you're sounding anti-Semitic. So, yeah. You just don't, I'm, you don't need to bring somebody else down to make your point, to lift other people up, to lift you up, especially another group that has their own history of oppression for centuries. But other than that, I mean, I think the biggest thing is, like you said, you know, we can't cancel everyone. The cancel culture is is lame. And, and whether, you know, we're talking about it in Me Too sense or, you know, now with BLM and social justice, it's like... By the way, that's... Yeah, to some point, yeah, you do have to speak with your pockets and you do have to, you know teach people better and force people to be better by withholding their money and holding them accountable. But at the same time, you also got to, not everything is black and white, you know, not everything happens in a vacuum and you got to take other people's backgrounds into consideration. Like there's a dude from Long Beach Poly who went to Cal Berkeley, you know, who's in Philly and he's racially mistreated by his head coach. He's, he's, he's done Great community shit at every stop he's been the at red, along the, the dead way. The Redskins, everywhere. At, everywhere he's been, he's done immense community work. So, you know, you you got to take that into consideration. Like, And maybe he just didn't know, and now he does. Now he won't slip up again. Now he won't make that same mistake. They, so, yeah. I mean, at this point, it's it's is it enough? Is It's got to be enough, right? I think it's enough because <clears throat> what we're not going to do is cancel black people when we built this country and watched everybody else get reparations and we get told oh it didn't happen to you yeah but it happened to my ancestors and they didn't get reparations so you got to understand when the most oppressed group of people in this country are speaking or talking sometimes it's not always going to come out sometimes it's going to be a lot of righteous indignation sometimes people are educating themselves at different speeds at different times so some of the things that they say or the people they may quote it doesn't always come out right, but you got to judge people based on their actions and the content of their character. You know, something that black people don't get judged on. We just get, well, I don't need to, I, I could just point you back to the Riley Cooper situation, how he got a two year extension after using that word. And what you were saying, you know, there's a lot of people. I'm the, not excusing what There was said. a lot of people in the Bleacher Report com, in comments who were like. Mad racist. Yeah, they were like. That anti-black racist. If he was, was white heavy. and said that about black people, he would have got Didn't they made dragged a, by black people and blah, blah, blah. But to your point. They made a false equivalency with Riley, Drew Brees. But to, yeah, between your point with Riley Cooper, you know, with the owner with the Texans, with. Bob McNair. You know. Jerry Barstool Jones sports, even. like <laughs> fuck Barstool you know, Sports, by the way. Like Barstool is Barstool Sports going to lose their credentials? No, Probably they're not. white. They're white. So that's what I'm saying. Is like, yeah, like. By the way, did Mel Gibson get canceled? He went on a whole anti-Semitic rant, and Hollywood let uh, him. Back he kind of did get canceled for like a solid like two years. No, when they when the Jewish community blackballs you, they blackball you. He like the rest of Hollywood let him back in, and he started making money again. And it's just like, he meant every word he said. Like, some people just have the best intentions and say dumb shit. I think the scariest thing to me is just that this is probably going to prevent, you know, other athletes from embarking on that journey, at least publicly, and, you know, sharing what they're reading and things like that, because... Well, educate yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you want to share it, share it. But I think people got to understand that, like, 
people who are 